Hi everyone, over the past month or so, I've had quite a few game developers and players reach out asking, how am I doing that art for Astro Burn? Everything you see here is handcrafted with a very deliberate visual style that's meant to feel dimensional, even though it's all 2D. Now, I wanted to capture that retro vibe, but give it my own modern twist. So, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my process, the tools I use, and how I'm achieving this unique look in Astro Burn. Not only hopefully it will clear up all of the questions, but most importantly, I hope it inspires you and helps you grow on your own project. So let's go. And so you can see here, I'm using Unreal Engine 5 to create my assets. So let me break this down to you. It makes a lot of sense for me to use Unreal Engine 5 because my entire career has been using Unreal for a long time. I can't draw, so I may as well use the tools that I'm actually familiar with. So let me show you how I'm using Unreal to create these assets. So first thing, I go and find my favorite asset pack, and I'm currently using um, Sci-Fi Polygon by the Cinti guys, so they're called Cinti. And um, they've got an amazing pack, and one thing I'll make very clear is I specifically went for low polygon objects. It's gonna make sense in a minute why. I didn't go for anything complex or photo real or anything like this. I wanted something that's very low polygonal for a specific reason. So let's say, let's go and pick something that I've been using so far, which is this one here. So many of you may see in the trailer or the early footage that I released, you see one of the obstacles is this thing that spins around. Well, that was, this is from here, this is from Unreal. This is from the Cinti asset pack I got. So basically what the first thing you wanna do is, um, you can see here when it's in lit mode, it looks like this. So first thing you wanna do is get the look of it right. And so there are two materials I use in Unreal to get this look that I want. And I'm gonna show you. Those materials actually work in the post process. So it's a post process um, effect essentially. So if you go to post process, you can see here, I'm gonna turn on these materials. So the first one is this thing called um, Cell Shader Parent, M Cell Shader. And you can just go onto the Epic um, Marketplace Store or Fab and um, and just type in Cell Shader. There are tons of Cell Shader uh, materials you can buy and it will pretty much do the same thing. So you can see here when I turn it on, it flattens everything, almost like being in unlit mode. But the thing is, I need to render this out. So obviously I can't render out unlit mode. So having this flattens everything and it's already looking pretty cool. And the next thing I wanna do is kind of like pixelate it. And to do that, I've got this really cool um, sort of like blueprint script I've put together that pixelates it. See here, it pixelates it now. Now this is all gonna be customizable. So let me show you what this actual script is doing or this blueprint is doing. So let's find it here. I'll call it M Retro, aptly, of course. And let's load it up. Okay, so this is the script. Now, bear in mind, I'm gonna give a very full disclaimer here and then come out of this in my head. I saw a couple of YouTube videos on how to do screen displacement, how to offset pixels, how to do pixel shifting. I basically took all of those tutorials, took the best bits out there and kind of put together a script using this. And then one of the videos that really helped me, I'm actually gonna put the link to the YouTube video in my description, so you should check it out, because it's really, really useful. Um, okay, so th just quickly go through. It's a basically a screen positioning blueprint. So you can see screen position here. It plugs in a bunch of stuff here. Um, scene texture processing. I mean, I don't even know what half this stuff is. I know, I just follow the tutorials, plug it in. But what's really cool is it's very simple. And what's great is it's customizable. And it's really customizable in this section here, which is called pixelation. So at the moment it's 200, but if I was to make this say 10, you see here, it's super pixely, which is not gonna be good. In fact, if I just hit apply, let's see what it actually does to my, um, <laughs> there you go pretty much turns it into nothing. It's kind of a cool effect. So let's really put it to something like, I don't know, 200. And then you hit apply. And now you've got something which is something like this. But you know, maybe that's a bit too pixely because this is gonna let you know, the whole pixelation effect doesn't just happen in Unreal. There's another process that happens after, so I'm gonna show you. Um, but if I just say, make it say, I don't know, 500. And then hit apply. So you can see here, it's much neater, but it's not really pixel art, it's just jagged edges on a cell shaded object. So what I'll probably wanna do is I'll probably wanna just shift this down to like something like 300. That seems to be like a nice number. Cool movie too. Um, there you go, something like 300. That's kind of cool, that, that's got broken edges. And also because this is post-processing, 
you know, it's based on screen space as well. So the further you are away, the more pixely it becomes and closer you are, um, the more cleaner it becomes. So this is why it's very, very important um, to, actually, I'm gonna make this two, 250. I know I'm just being really pedantic here. Here we go. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, okay, let's close that. So um, because it's screen space, you kind of want to lock your cameras because you know you can't really screenshot this because you want this rendered as a PNG. So this is the next step is setting up your cameras. So just do the standard thing. Just create um, create a level sequencer and let's just call it um, obstacle. There we go. And then load that up. And now we're just gonna put a camera in there. And um, you can pull the camera back or you can just change the lens. Be careful to change the lens too wide because that would obviously distort your image. Now, firstly, I'm not going to be animating this. Now in the footage you saw of the game, this thing spins around. Well, that was actually animating code. It's far easier to animate in code than actually rendering I don't know, 50 frames and playing that back. It's not a very smart way of making games. So um, you just want to use our resources smartly. So let's just aim, position this nicely here, something like this. And once you've got it in camera, you start to see, oh yeah, pixelation does look quite cool actually. That's quite nice. Um, you probably want to just go back and tweak it. So I probably want to tweak that actually. Because now that I've got it in camera, I'm like, oof, that does look a bit too pixely. So I'll just go back to my, um, to my little um script here so let's open that and go load it up and i'm just gonna let's have a look I'm just gonna probably make this 300. Let's try that now yeah that's a bit better much better it's not too jagged all right so now you've got the camera make sure you lock the cameras by putting a transform node you've got that there and um i don't think it matters whether you've got depth of field on here um I mean, just have it as high as you can, but you don't need to go too crazy because it's gonna render it flat anyway. Um, now, the next thing you wanna do is render this as a PNG. So you wanna to go to Windows, Cinematic, and Movie Render Queue. Now, there is something you need to do first is you need to create what you call a preset. Now, I've already created that, but let me show what that preset looks like. But first, let's just load in my obstacle um, sequencer. There it is. and. So if I was to render this, it would literally just be rendering this. And that's going to be pointless because that's a fully rendered thing. And I need it in a specific way for it to work as a sprite. So what I did was I created um, a preset. Called it has retro rendering. Why not? Let's click that. And now I'm going to show you what that preset is. And you can copy this preset as well. It's very easy. So first thing I did was disable JPEG and go to PNG sequence. And in PNG sequence, I made sure this is very important tick that box right alpha so that it can render an alpha channel, which is very important if you're bringing it into your game as a sprite. Um, so there's that. And then obviously deferred rendering, you just make sure you include alpha here. So anything of alpha, you just make sure you include. Now, the next thing you want to do is make sure that your materials are also included in the render queue. So in my case, I'm just going to make sure I've got, um, make sure all this is in here. There you go, retro look. So I labeled it retro look and that's my, M retro vibe. So I've got my materials in there to make sure it's all in there. That's cool. All right, cool. And then once you accept that, that's cool. And then the other thing I want to do also is I just want to check the output. Um, I mean, sometimes I do 1287. What I always recommend is render the highest res, right? So you always have a high res that you can use for marketing artwork, like I've done for the posters. And then what you can do when you want to rend when you want to create something for the sprite for the game, you do that somewhere else. So let's just um this is rendered like this. I think this is okay. I think that's fine. Um, okay, so let's set this to render. Oh, one thing you want to make sure. Oh, let me close this. You don't want to render 100 frames of the same thing. So you kind of want to just go to sequence and drag your last end frame here so that it's like you only went rendering like one frame. Yeah, it's one frame. Cool. Save that sequencer. And then you go to Windows, Cinematic, Render Queue. And um, I'm just going to render it to downloads test. And let's render to where we rendered it to. Let's go to test. And you can see here now in my download test folder, I've got a PNG render of my awesome rendered sprite. Well, it's not quite sprite yet, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, now we're gonna get this ready to put into GDev in the game. And this is where I use my favorite tool. Here we go, open with Affinity Photo. 
Now, I love Affinity. I love what these guys are doing. Um, I don't use Photoshop. I've, you know, I've abandoned the whole Adobe suite, and that's a whole other video you can watch on. But I've been loving Affinity a lot. And, you know, for some, I think these guys really like I also into retro because they've also got stuff like, you know, resized pixel art document. Ooh. So, um, okay, so first things first, this is 1280 by 720. It's just not going to work in a retro pixel art game. You know, pixels have to, you know, pixel art has to be quite small and it should also be square. So what I'm going to do is, um, the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize the document, okay? So I'm going to go resize document and I'm going to just resize it something like, I don't know, 320. Something like that, 320 by 180 for now. And this is super important. Make sure your sample isn't bilinear isn't by bit by qubit, but make sure it's nearest neighbor because that preserves the pixel, it doesn't smooth smudge it out or anything like that. It just preserves the pixel. And I hit resize. There you go. So now you're in proper pixel mode. You can see here all the individual pixels on the grid. And you can go in and paint stuff. You know, I tend to like add little lights in there if I want to. You know, I can go to town with this. But it's not quite ready because I don't really want to bring something of this size. So what I end up doing, I end up just cropping it. So oh, I just bring something like like this, like that. Just go right to the edge, right to the edge, like that. Let's go down here. There's no point having all this negative space, right? There we go and hit enter. Boom. So then, next thing I do, I go to file. I go to export. Always keep your high res on your render. Like I said earlier, it's good for marketing. Um, yep, that's fine. I mean, one seven three. I mean, it should be really one seven two, one seven two. But ah, for now, it's fine. Um, and then make sure it's not bilinear. Make sure it's the nearest neighbor. Make sure that's nearest neighbor, and then you export it and download test for now. And I'll call this obstacle PNG, obstacle sprite. Yeah, save. And that's it. That's ready to use in GDEV. So let's open GDEV and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is GDEV, and um, obviously mid project here. So I'm just going to load up the actual main game, which is the base scene here. There we go. So this is the actual level. And so all of this, all of these stuff here is all generated using um, Unreal, the same technique. So you recognize that big spinning thing earlier when I showed you going through the Cinti assets, which is cool. This is from another asset here. Um, okay, so let's find it. There you go. There's the wheel. So there's the wheel that we created. I'll put it in, in GDEV and there it is right there. And you know, that is all animated in code. So I just use a rotation code to go and loop and that's it. Now, here's something I really, really want to stress especially if you're using Unreal Engine or any engine to create 2D assets like the way I am. Always, always read the license in terms. I know it's tempting to think, well, I'm just using static render the sprites, not the actual 3D asset out of a different engine. I should be fine, right? And the reality is you probably will be fine, but not all assets allow for out of engine use, even if you're just exporting stills or 2D renders. Now, thankfully, it's fairly easy to check. Just go to the Asset Marketplace page and look under the license info. And also read the text about the specific license and info. Thankfully for me, it actually says out of engine is fine. But when it comes to characters, especially Astro the Cat, that's a whole different story. For that, I knew I needed something special. So I teamed up with some incredibly talented pixel artists. Some are hired on Fiverr Pro, others are reached out via Twitter and LinkedIn after seeing their wonderful portfolios. So all of the cat related sprites and animation were done by hand by these wonderful artists with love and precision. And finally, to save time and stay focused on the core experience, I also make use of a bunch of high quality asset packs, things like explosions, projectiles, lasers, bullets, sparks, impact VFX. I've got all of those from itch.io. Now these are all properly licensed for commercial use. And it's honestly a great way to fill out the game visually without trying to reinvent the wheel. So yeah, it's a real hybrid workflow. A bit of real-time engine magic, pixel art draftsmanship from artists I hired, and smart use of asset packs I purchased which are commercially licensed. So yes, that is how I'm bringing the art to Astroburn to life. I hope that was useful. Please subscribe. Don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.